I'm Anna Malofsky. I'm an assistant professor in the Department of Psychiatry. And as a psychiatrist, I'd like to start by saying that we have no cures for most major mental illnesses. So we have debilitating diseases like schizophrenia, autism, depression, and not a single cure. And so I'd like to tell you a little bit about how my lab is approaching this problem um, by understanding the development of the brain and how the immune system plays kind of an unexpected role in the healthy brain. Uh, so what's going on here? The brain is, trem is tremendously changing during childhood, and we happen to know that many psychiatric diseases actually begin during childhood. Um, and all of this change, this growth, this complexity, comes down to changes in the connections between nerve cells, known as synapses. Um, and just a few too many synapses, or too few, or in the wrong place, um, underlies many of the diseases that I mentioned earlier. So to get at this problem, how do we understand all of this complexity? It's very easy to forget that the brain is not just a fancy supercomputer with a bunch of connections, but it's actually an organ, just like the skin or the liver or the lung. Um, and like most other organs, the immune system plays a central role in helping to keep that organ healthy. So for example, the skin, which is an organ we can see, the skin is constantly regenerating, right? And there's new layers being formed all the time. And when you cut yourself, the same processes that are helping to regenerate the skin go into overtime to help heal a wound. And the immune system is underlying both of these processes. So both the healthy regeneration and um, the overdrive that helps to heal the wound and keep bacteria out. And just like the skin, the brain also has a healthy immune system that's working all the time to help turn over synapses. And the cells that help to do this are called microglia. Microglia make up 15% of the cells in the brain, and they are the immune cells um, in our brain. And so my lab um, uses genetically modified mice, and we do a lot of imaging and microscopy to understand how these cells are helping to keep the brain healthy. So for example, we've discovered that there's an immune signal called interleukin-33, um, which helps microglia to eat synapses more, uh, uh, to maintain a healthy balance of synapse numbers in the brain. Um, so that's just one example of the work that we're doing to try to understand this process. And ultimately, the reason that this all matters is because we have an opportunity here to bring together different fields, uh, studying the brain and studying the immune system, and realize that the brain, just like many other organs, um, can benefit from understanding how its immune system works. It's something that we don't understand very well right now. And yet in other fields, in asthma and cancer, we can see that immune therapies are leading to cures for diseases that we thought were lifelong and chronic. Um, and it's my hope that uh, the same can be achieved for mental illness um, through the process of basic science. 